Good afternoon, everyone. Looking forward to 2022, we only need look at Sri Lanka and forecast that out for the rest of the planet. April, in four months from now, Sri Lanka will be in food shortages. They had this plan to move to completely organic agriculture, which is a 25% lower yield on average, even suspending all fertilizers and agrochemicals from the country. And result, food inflation 11.1% in November alone. More food rations, but wait, economist numbers at 17.5%, rationed staples, they're even asking for loose change, those coming from overseas trips, so we need that. Now there's gas shortages, people can't cook their food even if they get it, no fires in the cities. EU, stark parallel, all-time high gas and electric prices, CF industry says there's a shortage in fertilizers coming in, 12% globally. If Sri Lanka is struggling that bad, what's the rest of the world going to do? There's going to be an increased demand of 4.7% minus the 12%. So we're really going to be down very far what we need. Add in the Goliath of society collapsing around us where even our most basic services are failing. Hyperinflation, 11 million job openings, and an energy crisis. Sound familiar? It's like Jimmy Carter in the 1970s all over again. Americans are paying twice as much at the gas pump and the grocery store. Democrats control all three branches of government. And there's just a couple of questions you need to ask yourself. Do you think you'll be better off in 2022 than you have been in 2021? And do you think the stock market will trade higher the next three years than it did from 2016 to 2020. If the answer is no, learn how simple it is to add physical gold and silver to your portfolio ahead of the rise in inflation and predicted price rises. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. Call 1-800-356-4470 and get a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And food is the most important thing in a society. If you have no food, you have no economy. And 2022 is going to be about the food. So forecasting out here, we're going to start down in Sri Lanka to give you an idea of how you can think into the future, protecting yourself and your families by what's happening in a smaller microcosm is going to spill out to the world. It's just going to take a little bit longer, but you can see what's happening there to gauge what will happen in your own city. So first, when we look at the maps here. If you have to relocate in Sri Lanka or in your own country, you're going to want to know where the best crop growing zones are. Because even with a fertilizer shortage and breakdown in farm machinery, supply chain, getting diesel fuels, etc., those places are going to get it all first because they can't really let a nation starve. Resources are always going to be diverted to the darkest green or the highest producing ag areas. It's been like that through history for 4,000 years. I don't see why it would change this time. So if something were to happen and you had to bug out, you would want to head to the most dense farming area in your local vicinity. And the story unveils a little something like this. Sri Lanka is poised to go into food shortages by April of 2022. That's four months from now. To the point starvation will be there and they're going to ask for international aid assistance because they can't feed the people. Now, this was a policy moving to a 100% organic raising of crops, whatever form that took. No chemical fertilizers, no pesticides. But ongoing already because of these policies, how quickly it occurred. Within a 12-month period, now they're on rationing. Staples, sugar, lentils, fish, rice. Okay, you might think those are survival foods and I would only eat it in the, if I was just on the side of a mountain and there was nothing left to eat. That's even being rationed. Put that through your head for a second. And also, the thing that made me 
rethink how we're moving forward here. It's the beginning of the changes of the cycle. So obviously there's going to be a lot more tumultuous things happening. The beginning of the cycle and the transition. The central bank is asking for loose change. Literally go into your sofa and look for change that you might have dropped from a foreign trip and give it to us because we need foreign exchange that badly. And then you add on the layer here of even if you can get the vegetables... You can't even cook it because there's a natural gas, propane shortage, diesel shortage, rationing going on with all the fuels, whether it's cooking fuels or automotive fuels, both rationed. And I think the rest of the world's around 2018. We're going to quickly follow. We have a year gap or so. So if we look back into, example, the price of beans in 48 rupees, but then you jump forward 367. Now, these are massive gains. You're like almost 10x. And if you look down at tomatoes, more than a 10x, almost a 20x in the increase. And you know how important tomatoes are for cooking. You have to ask yourself, the general society, could it absorb a 10x increase in food price? But then also fuels up and up. So when the project started, great idea, actually. But in practice, they didn't do the numbers and crunch the numbers on the declines in the organic yield compared to the regular fertilizers, NPK, etc., what they did was they set up all these village co-ops to produce organic fertilizer for the farms that were going to grow the food. And that's a great symbiotic system, and I, I wish it was like that from the beginning. It's not. We become too dependent on these chemical fertilizers, and you're looking at it right now when you don't have them. What happens? So we're coming in, 12% global decline in fertilizers next year. What do you think is going to happen globally? This is a microcosm. This is a future glimpse into the rest of the world. And even now they're questioning, what are we going to do with this land that's quote unquote plantations because it doesn't produce food, it produces foreign revenue, but the people are hungry on the streets, they're asking for change. So where do they get sandwiched in the middle? I don't know, maybe some companion planting between the rows where everybody's happy, where it produces food inside the plantation. Yeah, monocrop, but then add other crops that are symbiotic inside there. All food bearing species. Right off the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, Sri Lanka restricts and bans the import of fertilizers and agrochemicals. This is only in May of 2021. Remember I said this thing was less than a year from stable food production to rationing. And what I noticed reading a lot of the breakdown on what had happened, it seems that the lower yield really wasn't taken into consideration. They thought they could add to this by bringing in more imports, but they were only able to increase imports by about 19%, 18%. But their crop yields were far lower than 25. It was 32% somewhere as I was reading. So there's that disconnect, and, and even with the imports. And what's produced now, it's still not enough to cover the basic needs of everybody. And they're still rationing it, and it's still not enough. And if you want to get a gauge of where food prices will probably go globally in quarter three of 2022 that's out after the summer after the planting and you get a good idea of how much is not going to be there based on the amount of fertilizers not available 11.1 percent in november that's just one month another thing about imposing even more food rations but how do you ration again off of a ration you know 11.1 percent that's the official number out of colombo but then other indicators are showing 13.5% on that same exact month rise. But then over here at Trading Economics, it's 17.5%. So another side effect that I thought about this a couple of times before, and that was one of the reasons I decided to move out to the countryside myself. And people with wood stoves, they would burn their stack of wood, whatever it was for a barbecue. You know, you're going to have a barbecue and you have some laying around and you could get one or two meals out of that and then they're out. Firewood's hard to find in the city. Okay, that's a subset, A. But then we look. The real reason is, can you imagine everybody cooking with fire on every balcony there and then do that across the entire city? So they're saying it would bother the neighbors, lighting wood stoves, etc. So it seems to be a cultural taboo there. But again, if you're hungry, you're going to cook. And this one's off bookings.com, which is one of the nicer apartments for rent there in Colombo. Another thing to take into consideration on the inverse. So, you know, look at it two different ways here. Only 20% of the farmers in Sri Lanka had the knowledge on how to transition 100% from 
chemical fertilizers into the organics. Now the rest of the world right now is going to experience the opposite. They're not going to have enough chemical fertilizers, so they're going to try to switch over to organic. And you could reverse that and say, well, how many American farmers are ready to transition completely to 100% organic away from chemical fertilizers? Not very many, and they're going to need training. It's going to be sort of a cultural effort of everybody in their homes starting to do something for the food supply. And then you also add in petrol rationing. You know, you're starting to see these signs that are all over the planet here, not just in Sri Lanka. Petrol rationing, extreme high prices for diesel fuel, unbelievable high prices for fuels, natural gas, and propane, and anything else, if you can get it. But then look at this. They're so clean with it. I, I applaud them for being very honest in this. This is from the state-run Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, aimed at discouraging consumption. Discouraging consumption of one subset of society to save it for the agricultural society. That's what it brings me full circle back to that first slide. That fuel that's going to be rationed in the city is going to be siphoned off and then sent to the countryside so they can still grow food. So the cities are going to be the ones that are going to be sacrificed to keep the food coming. And also interesting, the future of money in business recorder as well subset here. Pakistan 20 billion in cryptocurrency, third on the global crypto adoption index. But at the same time, in Sri Lanka, they're starting to use crypto as a means for international exchange. Seed buying is going to be done more and more with crypto coming out of Sri Lanka. Think about that for a second. Both of those are going to be the currency of the new world. And then we have CF Industries, which I've spoken about before in a few videos. CEO comes out, Tony Will, says these shortages are going to last into 2023 because demand destruction, there's not enough tons available. Okay, we saw when there's not enough tons available, what's it going to happen in Sri Lanka? Now take it to the global level. But then we need to add it up a little bit because the trajectory year upon year was 5% increase from the last year. Actually, 4.7%. The compound annual growth rate need for increased fertilizer production for more food for more people. But we're going the opposite direction. We're going down minus 12%. And this at the same time would be plus 4.7%. But now you're going to need to take that away because it just won't be there. So just put it in the negative column as well. It, that's a zero actually. So there's a huge disconnect here. If it really is the 12% plus is 4.5, we're looking at 16, 17% global fertilizer reductions. And if they're talking about a 25% decrease in yields trying to use organics, or will farmers just not plant because they don't have the expertise to know how to plant organic. You're looking at least at 15 to 20% loss of global agriculture everywhere. What is that going to do to prices and people? Because these fertilizer prices are skyrocketing. They're going to continue up and up and up. This one comes off December 22nd here. Substantial move is considered anything 5% or more. And we look at anhydrous, 16% up in a single month. You need the nitrogen, you need the phosphorus, you need the potassium, and you need a lot more than that too to grow on a commercial scale to bring the amount of food we're used to into market. Urea, 5% more expensive. Now here's another dovetail. Australia is going to be running out of urea in just a couple months if they can't accrue more, import more, their fuel supplies are going to be limited. Also, their fertilizers too. I mean, this is a global phenomenon happening here. And I'm just wondering how organic it really is. Or is it planned? For all these shortages, break down in the supply chain. Everything that you need to produce food is being somehow slowed down. But what's not slowing down in a direct parallel, Europe is second right in line behind Sri Lanka here. The mix is already in play. Massive energy price increases on the electric side. But look at this, oil barrel equivalent from the natural gas. That's the highest it's ever been. Even 2008 and 9 wasn't that high. Suddenly there's a shortage of natural gas. You know, they're down about 15 
20%, let's say the same thing, 15 to 20% on the natural gas just in Europe. What did that do over there? Now take 15% off global agriculture and what will it do around the planet? They're rerouting ships because there's such an arbitrage opportunity to buy it cheaper in the United States and points out of Louisiana and send it over to Europe. The rerouting. Well, that's good for now, but what happens if it get really cold in the States and they can't get that or something happens in the middle of the Atlantic that blocks those routes? But even just at the very first days of December, just an early warning on the article, supplies are adequate before winter for applications. Because a lot of farmers season the field, get them ready for planting. But with prices so high, some farmers are delaying purchases and then they're going to risk a scramble for supplies during the busiest time of the year, which is spring. And when there's not enough fertilizer for everybody, it's going to be water cooler talk. And then, you know, put this on top, because you really do need to mix this in together. Australia's collapsing. Turkey's collapsing. Now we have Sri Lanka in full collapse as well, all based around food. And Australia will be very quickly behind this without the fertilizers. And you just have to ask, which countries will be next, in which order, and how fast will it transition out? Our society's in the process of collapsing around us. It's gotten now to the point where the most basic services are starting to fail. Where did all the workers go? Millions and millions of people disappeared out of the workforce in just the last year and a half. Where did everybody go, and why is nobody coming back? And I found this article that tags right along with that. Because essential services, basic services, are rail lines, fuel, pipeline operation, bridge, maintenance, repair. These types of things, keeping the highways and byways functional and passable, those are essentials. So Amtrak had to reverse its mandates within the company because they were shutting down routes over staff shortages. The same thing that we're seeing across the airline industry as well. So it is everywhere and thick in every country, every continent. And the very next thing to occur is going to be people on the street not able to eat. Most of their paychecks going to food if they didn't prepare. It'd be wise to think about getting out of the city right now. When this comes, the cities are going to be the things that will be sacrificed to the countryside to continue to grow food. You'll be locked down in there on rations, and that's not a place any of us want to be, truly. With all this information in front of us to be able to keep ourselves and our families safe, that should not even be an option for anybody listening to this video that you would be put in that position. And a simple example, having some stored foods, whether you get it at the supermarket and jar up your own, freeze dry your own, vacuum pack your own. Awesome. If you don't have the energy, time, or expertise to do that, three month emergency food supply, adapt 2030 in my Patriot Supply. 25 year shelf life with 21 varieties of different foods, breakfast, lunch, and dinners that you can prepare in home and you don't even have to venture out into the chaos. I do thank you for listening. Hope you got something out of the video. I'll see you next time.